Anthony, I am back and I was recently given the task of customized coloring hair extensions for a client of mine who also happens to be a family member, which I know is a little bit more tough because your family wants you to do a perfect job. So I'm gonna make it happen and I also wanna give a special shout out to Izzy, you are awesome. Izzy was super helpful with um, finding products because let's be real, there are so many different options at Sally Beauty Supply. I go in there and I'm like a kid in a candy store. It is hard for me to focus on one thing. I kind of want to go and grab everything and put it in the basket. Then I have to sit there and think, do I really need this? Do I want it? And I usually end up getting way more than I need. Um, but anyhow, I recently went and I found some human hair extensions. I got one good quality one and then I thought, yeah, I don't know if I want to color these because I paid an arm and a leg for them. So I'm going to reuse them for a different video. And I ended up getting um, design lengths hair extensions. These are 100% human hair. If you don't feel comfortable customize coloring your own extensions, you can get the pre-colored ones. And I think you can even alter them as you see fit. Most of the time, the extension companies will tell you not to color their products because they can't guarantee a good result. However, if you are a professional and you know what you're doing, you can do it and you can do just as good as a job. So I got the platinum ones because they are a perfect clean base. If you wanted to, you could probably do a very quick bleach bath to lighten this a little bit. I'm not going to do that because I think the colors I got will be perfect enough. And doing your own extensions are as simple as this. You unpack your extension. These are, um, let me just see if I can undo this one. Sometimes it's a little bit of a challenge because they're so in there. So I'm going to be right back. Take these out of the box and I'll show you guys um, how to color with fun shades. All right, so I got the extensions out of the packet. They are pretty decently sized. I do wish they were a little bit longer, but that's not too much of an issue. It looks like they're a pretty decent length, so if I measure like so, um, you actually get close to my length, but if you hide them in there, you'll get some thickness. And these are also really great for braiding because what you can do is take the parting, clip these in, clip it like so, and then braid this in with the hair. So you'll get two pieces that are single clipped and I actually like this because it's easier to position in the hair as opposed to extensions that have two or four or five wefts. It becomes very difficult. So that was the one thing that I actually liked is that with Sally Beauty Supply, they have a variety. So the ones I got before may not have been the ideal ones for coloring because they had multiple wefts and that was my fault. I should have checked. Um, they still are amazing. So I'm going to use the good quality ones for another tutorial and I might even color them a certain way or practice highlighting and low lighting. With these, you can use permanent color. Um, you can use a foil to put some low lights in there or add some dimension. There's so many ways to do this, but I'm gonna teach you guys just the basics of how to get a basic solid color. So with these hair extensions, they will take color readily and I've tried them, um, tried it before actually. I'm gonna be using all semi-permanent color. Um, Ion Color Brights is the color I'm gonna be using. This is an amazing line of semi-permanent color. It's a very good quality line. You can intermix them with each other because it's semi-permanent. So let's say you see the amazing rose and you go, well, I want the rose to be a little bit more magenta. You can take um, the hottie pink, add a little bit of that and deepen it. Because with direct dye, what you see is what you get. I even like the semi-permanent color for using them as a toner. Um, way back in the day when I would go blonde, I actually would use a semi-permanent color as a toner and it came out a lot better than the demi color. It was more solid, it was more gentle, it wasn't as harsh. And for reds, these are really cool. So with my shade, you can actually take one of the red shades or even some of the pinks, throw them in there and you'll still get a nice fashionable red result. Uh, that will look pretty cool. So I'm gonna be using um, different shades on these. I'm gonna try the mint rose, lemon yellow, and I might try the cyan or hottie pink. I'm not sure yet. I might even mix them to get a purple. So for this tutorial, I'm gonna film this for you guys. Pretty much the basics of this is taking your extension like so, taking your semi-permanent color, squirting it in the bowl. You always wanna do this too when wearing a glove, especially if you're new, because direct dye will stain the heck out of anything, and you'll end up getting a free manicure or a free Tattoo, um, depending on where you get it and if you get it everywhere. So glove your hand, squirt it in a bowl, take your color brush like so, take a hair foil to keep your area neat, take the color, paint the extension. If you have to, use the um, end of the, not the comb, the brush to section it, paint, put some hair down, 
get it all nice and covered, and then what I'll do is I'll take my gloved hand and I'll gently massage the color in there, I'll work it in, cover it with the foil, and let it process. Semi-permanent colors, because they're not mixed with anything, it's usually the longer you let it sit on, the more intense the color. Uh, this does not have any kind of peroxide in there, no kind of ammonia. I don't know the amount of time on here, but I will let you guys know if I find it. I think it's like 25 or 30 minutes or something. I've had hair extensions that I was doing and I literally left them overnight and it was fine. So, I'll be right on. All right, so I have my extensions laid out and I'm going to start with the color rose. So this is pretty simple. You can use a color key if it's easier. You just puncture like so. Um, the color actually smells very nice. It has like a lemony, citrusy smell to it. And I'm going to squeeze some of that in there like so. It's a pretty nice vibrant pink. And you normally don't need much color. Um, a little of this will go a long way. I would say with one tube you're probably looking at close to enough color for, I wanna say at the very least six. You can probably get more though. So I'm just gonna dip my brush in the color like so. I'm gonna section this off just a little bit because I wanna make sure I penetrate everything evenly. I think though, doing the extensions, it's so satisfying. It's very relaxing. Um, it's actually pretty fun to do and it's a little bit less of a mess than doing your own color. Um, I read the instructions too for the brights. You can leave them on for up to 40 minutes. I you could do longer if you so choose. I will say that um, if you're using the lights on natural hair that's uncolored, actually process with heat, that will help it develop better. And you just paint it on like so. It's very, very thick. It's almost like the consistency of a conditioner, like a deep one. And you can just see this color, it's sucking right in there. I know it's kind of hard to see in the camera because it's such a light color, um, but when you try this, you can actually see the color absorbing right in. If you wanted a brighter color, um, you can mix with a clear or another trick that I learned was applying it to not wet but damp extensions because the water will act like a filler and it might actually dilute the color. But I always think it's easier to add the clear in there. And you can get creative. I always say keep a formula book, try different formulas if you're doing this for yourself. You might discover that you like a shade when it has a little bit more blue or red added to it or a different pigment. Sometimes you can make um, like a rose gold. There are just so many ways to have fun with hair extensions because they're a great way to change up your look without having to get excessive damage in the hair or um, save your hair a lot of processes. I mean, back in the day when you had the whole um, emo scene phase, I used to do the, uh, the different printed extensions like either with the zebra pattern or the raccoon pattern and I would do those all from home and everyone thought I always was changing my hair color and my secret was just hiding them really well. Let me put a little bit more color. Not much, but just like a dab. Okay. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna turn it around just like flipping a vegan burger. And I'm gonna apply it to the other side. Make sure it's all nice and saturated. And let me see. Gotta get some of the ends there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it up like so. and I'm just gonna massage it. So I'm gonna take my thumb and my index finger and just gently massage the color through. Make sure it's all nice and penetrated. Do this a few times to ensure that you have even saturation of your color. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the foil. And take the foil like so. You can even put the hair up a little bit. And just, you can leave it like so open or take the foil and fold it and cover it.
You don't have to add heat, you can, I personally don't, but if you feel that the extensions aren't taking it well, give it a little bit of heat on um, low velocity, higher medium heat with the dryer for 10 seconds, take it off, foil will get nice and hot and we'll keep that heat going. So I'm gonna wait 40 minutes and I'm gonna repeat this with a few other shades and I'll show you guys the finished result. All right, so I'm gonna do this again with the mint green. This actually looks pretty cool. It looks kind of blue. I'm just gonna stir this up a little bit. I mean, it definitely smells good. It smells kind of like, um, I don't wanna say pine saw, but kind of like a citrusy version. This actually looks pretty cool. Looks really neat. So again, I'm gonna see if I can section this a little bit so I can make sure everything is nice and saturated. I'm sure you guys are all pros by now after seeing the first one. I just figured I'd add this because it is so satisfying to watch hair swatches get made. I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely love watching um, people swatch things out, mix the colors, test it out. It's just super fun. Working in a color lab would be just so much fun being able to test out new colors, try them on clients, do some cool hair colors. And I always think that um, a lot of this is therapy because once you um, get to know a client for a while, they will disclose a lot of stuff to you, probably more so than they would their actual therapist if they have one. And then you guys get to build that um, client stylist relationship. And then you get to see your clients grow, which is always the fun part. Like when you've had a client for so long and you've got to see them graduate college um, and some of them will have either gotten a good career, start a family, and the saddest part is saying goodbye to a client when they have to leave. I remember a good friend of mine, she, um, she passed down about a year ago, but her one stylist, she was telling me, she was in her 70s, she had known the stylist for 30 something years, and she told me that when she chose her hairdresser, she kept getting great results at the one salon, but all of her hairdressers kept getting pregnant because they were in their like late 20s, early 30s. So finally she stood up in the middle of the salon and she goes, all right, which of you guys will never ever get pregnant? And everyone was dead quiet. The salon, um, no one spoke. A few of them laughed. Finally, one guy stood up and he goes, shyly, well, I, I can't get pregnant. She goes, you're it. And she goes, 30 something years later, he was my stylist. So it's always like little things like that that I always think are impressive. Um, one of the things I always like to do is if I'm ever working with a person who is um, older and they've been in the beauty industry, I always ask them what their experience is like because I always want to hear what they learned, what was the biggest technology innovation in their day because the industry has changed so much and I always think it's cool. I mean, the, if you go back 50 something years ago, the best technology they had was probably electronic tools, maybe you know curling irons. Now we have digital irons, steam irons, so many different products to choose from. This one is almost done. Even though the rule is that with direct eye, what you see is what you get, sometimes the color will look a little bit different. And then when you see it actually come out, um, it will look a little bit lighter or deeper. And when color is wet, it's always the hardest. You can't really judge color accurately when it's wet because it looks deeper and warmer, sometimes brighter too. Get the back of this guy. If you don't flip, if you guys see this, you'll end up with um, essentially a natural highlighted effect, which is not always ideal.
All right, I think the next shade I'm gonna test is going to be the hottie pink. I wanna see how that one comes out. All right guys, so I'm doing the hottie pink and this is actually pretty cool. It looks like a deeper magenta color. So I'm interested to see how that will be different from the um, rose pink. I should have gotten some of the salmon color. I would have mixed it in and I would have saw if I could make like a more of a warmer coral color, kind of like the Pantone color of the year. I will say that direct dyes are great for doing um, color matching because you can literally create anything from just a few shades. It's all about how you, how bright or how deep you want your colors. And that's what I really like about using direct dyes. So I also want to mention too that if you're doing this in extensions that are deeper in color, you might want to consider doing a bleach bath or actually lightening them um, with a lightener because if you don't get the right pre-lightened level, you're gonna get a different color because how light your um, starting color is will affect the result. Um, you always wanna check with the manufacturer because every brand is different. Some brands, um, you can get a close color. Others, you'll get a drastically different one. So always calling that helpline and making sure that you're reading the manufacturer's instructions will make all the difference. This one's definitely more pigmented. Look at that, it goes right on. Some of the more translucent colors, it's a little bit more challenging because of how light they are. It's hard to see if you really penetrated or not, and you don't always know until you um, rinse everything out and see the result. Pink is like one of the colors that I always wanted to try but was never brave enough to do it. Um, I've done it by accident uh, years ago. I was young and very inexperienced and I tried to color my hair at home using a boxed um, direct dye kit and lightener. I won't name any names but it's the most infamous one and I ended up thinking I was gonna get a nice red and I ended up getting 50 shades of orangey pink. My hair looked like a salmon. Um, <laughs> my parents like freaked out. Give this video a thumbs up if you guys have ever had parents that were cranky when you dyed your hair or colored it. Uh, it actually took a good few years for my parents to accept that, you know, I'm an artist and my hair is my canvas. I still get it from a few family members. They'll be like, so when are you going back to your natural hair color? And I'm like, oh, no, any, not anytime soon. Um, that is for sure. It is either going to be um, red or blonde or some kind of fun color because for me, um, brown was just boring. I never really liked like the red-brown shades because you know they weren't as exciting and I wanted something that was a little bit different. That's why I kind of fell in love with this field is because in this field you can have any kind of hair color and you know still get somewhere. And I think you know other um, companies and stuff are being more accepting of unnaturally colored hair because they're realizing it that that is the future. A lot of um, young people are responsible for that change. I always think it's cool because we live in color. I mean if we didn't have um, color, we would be living in a boring black and gray world. And that was actually a topic um, when I was at the summit and it was why is color important? And if you think about it, we use color in ways that we don't think. If we didn't see in color, we would never know that something was wrong. We would never see a flashing alarm. We'd never see a stoplight. There'd be a ton of car accidents. Uh, if we didn't see color, we couldn't appreciate the beauty of nature. We wouldn't know certain species of animals or plant everything would just be boring. Um, so yeah, it really put things in perspective. All right, I'm gonna go process all these and I'll be back with the finished result for you guys. All right, so this is just a comparison of the hair extensions lined up and this is the control, a regular um, untreated extension. I think the one thing that I would do um, going forward is um, just for the integrity of the hair extensions, I would mix up some Malibu C or any kind of mineral remover and treat the hair extension that way. Dry them after you shampoo and condition. That way in case there's any kind of mineral residue, it's out of the extension and the color will take more evenly. However, um, I found by just doing this uh, right from the pack 
all these extensions took really well. The colors are all fairly even and solid. Even the green, there might be a few pieces that are a little um, more on the blue side. It actually ended up really well. Um, so I'm actually impressed with that. Let me put this on a paper towel so you guys can see it under a pure white background. This is a mint green, but it's like a nice um, seafoam blue is like the other shade I'd call it. Or like a seafoam green. The rose pink is a nice gorgeous shade of uh, reddish pink. The hot pink is more of a red. It's like a red magenta. If you put these side by side, uh, the pink, the rose pink is more of like a rosé color. It's like a, a pure pink where this one has like more red added to it. And then compared to the platinum one, they all look very, I mean, they all look very nice. So I would say that if you are not used to coloring extensions at home, or I guess you want to save money, you can get a pre-colored one. But I think that when you have, um, colored your own, you can get really creative and it looks a little bit more shinier. So ion color was definitely very nice. It smells amazing. It doesn't have like a nice, uh, nasty, gross chemical smell because when I color my extensions, what I do is I rinse them on cool water and then I get all the color out. And then after that, I don't shampoo, I don't condition. I want the color to lock in there. And then you want to educate the client at home on how to care for them. All right, so I hope you guys liked this video. I do want to give you guys a few tips on how to care for your extensions. So because these extensions have direct dye in them, direct dye is more prone to fadage compared to other colors. So you want to make sure that when you are caring for your extensions, you're not using the hottest heat ever because you can actually not only melt the hair, but it will discolor and you will permanently ruin them. So when you have your hair extensions, please store them on either a mannequin head or you can put them on a um, hanger Make sure you store them flat. You don't want the hair extensions to get all tangled and ratted because then you have to uncomb them and that can be uh, damaging to the hair extension. I do also want to tell you guys that when using uh, hair extensions like this, you want to make sure that you are not shampooing them with uh, shampoos that are going to strip them. So avoid uh, salt sprays, avoid uh, products that are very high in pH. Any kind of uh, over-the-counter shampoo that is very high in pH will strip the color out and then it might also ruin the extension. Don't sleep in these that can tangle your hair up and it can pull at your scalp. These um, you can braid with, so you can braid with them, you can add them to a ponytail, a bun, any kind of style. Uh, definitely have fun, get creative, and if you have a hairdresser like me doing these, make sure you go to them if you want them to change the color. Some of them may uh, give you a discounted price, others may do like one free recoloring. I usually do one free recolor or shift a shade uh, to get people back in on booking with me. What I also will do as well is I will tell them that with most hair extensions, they kind of have a lifespan, so you're kind of limited to how often you can recolor. What I did find is with the uh, semi-permanent color, there are dye removers for them that might be helpful. So if you are a professional, make sure you're using a dye remover that is efficient on this. Most of the time, um, these colors are oil-based, and what that means is that you need an oil to remove them. At the same time, uh, clients that want to condition their extensions, be incredibly careful because I've seen people use coconut oil or hot oil treatments on these and it strips the color all, all out or it will discolor it. Um, so please don't do that. That can also ruin your extensions. Um, but I also get asked at the same time, well, my natural hair doesn't uh, you know, take um, a curling iron or a flat iron at a uh, set temperature. So how do I curl or straighten my extensions? Well, it's as simple as this. You can actually attach them right here and then in the mirror, use your iron at the lowest heat setting possible to smooth or curl the extension. When you get the ideal curl, blend them in once you have finished uh, curling, crimping, or flat ironing your hair. You can also air dry these. I recommend air drying in a nice um, space. If your house is very cold and you're not gonna air dry them, uh, use the blow dryer on low heat and just gently fan them. What I do like about Ion Color is that whatever is in this product locks it in place and I have not seen that in other brands. This was a paper towel after I had blotted it and there is no trace whatsoever, not even a faint amount of any kind of color. And I was actually pretty impressed with that. So Ion is really, really good for doing this. You can use any other brand that you uh, so choose. As professionals, we make the brands work for us. 
So keep that in mind. You don't have to use ion. You can use any kind of color or any kind of direct dye. You can use permanent uh, hair color if that's easier. So I hope you guys enjoyed my tutorials on how to make these amazing shades using um, regular blonde extensions. They also must be human hair, so don't try to do this with mixed extensions. You're going to get a really ugly result. Synthetic hair is not going to take hair color. So I want to hear from my viewers. Do you guys make your own hair extensions? Comment down below on what your favorite uh, brand is and your favorite shades to use are. So like, comment, hit that subscribe button down below, and I'll be on for more videos. If you guys like me swatching out these colors, um, let me know because maybe I'll do another series for you guys. So I'll see you guys soon.